Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the New Orleans Kings franchise. And we're coming off actually a pretty good start to the season through the first 31 games, 16 and 15. I mean, that's a quite a dramatic improvement from season one as far as our start goes. And I'm actually encouraged by the offensive side of the ball. Yasiel Puig is hitting the ball extremely well to start this season. He was hurt for pretty much the entire season last year, but now he's healthy coming into a contract year, so he is definitely going to be on his A game. Now, Marcus Simeon isn't really that impressive to start out, but Corey Lee is. I got to admit, he's doing pretty well as a rookie. I'm surprised to see him doing that well so far. And then Clint Frazier. I mean, a huge disappointment so far. Hopefully, he will turn that around. But our pitching staff isn't doing too bad right now. Urquidy is about 1-2-3 whip. But Pablo Lopez and Alex Wood are doing their thing at the top at 1-2 and two in the rotation. And then our bullpen isn't really bad at all. Craig Stammen has a 107 whip. Nate Jones has a really high whip so far. But I expect that to kind of decrease just a little bit as he gets more into acclimated into uh, our rotation as a closer. And then just looking at what we are doing so far, I think we did pretty well. Our, our first month and a half of the season was pretty tough, to be honest. And I think we did the best of what we could do. But now here we are in the month of May. And at, we're going to give the ball to Alex Wood in this game versus the Kansas City Royals for the first game of this month. Let's see what he can do. So the first batter is going to be Raul Montesi Jr. He did kind of change his name. And he flies out to right field as that brings up Whit Merrifield with the one two count. And we will get him to swing at a pitch out of the zone. And out comes our hot bats. And I want to see what Billy Hamilton can do in the leadoff spot. So here he is leading off. He gets a hit right up the middle. He goes back up the box. And you know what I'm thinking? As soon as he gets on first, I'm thinking about two. Let's see if we swipe a bag. But here comes Marcus Simeon up to the plate. Who hits a fly ball to right field, and he will uh, get put out on that one. And that brings up Yasiel Puig, in, hitting in the three-hole. Remember, we did move him up, and we are going to send Billy, Billy Hamilton, but that's going to be ball four. So now guys on first and second with Jesus Aguilar hitting 316 through the first 30 games. He gets a hanger over the middle and hits one hard at third base, and it's going to be an easy tag and throw to first for a double play. As we move on to the bottom of the second inning, Corey Lee is hitting the ball extremely well so far. He's got speed as well. He hits one to second base in a bobble. He will reach uh, on an error by Whit Merrifield that second. And that brings up Scooter Jeanette, hitting 296 to start the year. Pretty good start to him, and he goes to opposite field on a hit and run. That was perfectly executed. And look, take a look. The left fielder bobbles this one, and Lee has the speed to make it all the way from first, and he scores the first run of this game. one nothing here for the Kings, as now that brings up Jack Rochford getting a start in this one, hitting in the eighth hole as he watches the slider on the inside part of the plate, and that one could have went either way. But now guys on first and second. Randy Arrazarena at the plate, and he will just hit a lazy pop fly in the infield. And that's two outs in the inning as the lineup rolls over. Billy Hamilton at the plate. He's already one for one. He lays down the bunt down the left field line. Let's see if he can beat this one out, and it's going to be safe. And now bases loaded with our two, three, and four hitters coming up. Marcus Simeon, let's see if he has some clutch gene in him. He hits one hard to left field, and that one is going to be caught in left field and that one is gonna leave three runners stranded as we move on to the bottom of the third here's Yasiel Puig the hottest hitter in baseball right now he hits one to left field and that one will bounce off of the top of the wall and it's gonna be a stand-up double is there we go Yasiel Puig really tearing the cover off the ball leading our team in average and he does get rewarded get moved up to that three hole hitter in our lineup so that brings up Aguilar, who does walk on that one. I really love Aguilar, man. He's doing really extremely well for us. And that brings up David Bodie. We have bats all around the lineup now. And that one is going to be a hard hit down the right field line. And that one will score one and will move Jesus Aguilar to third. And that one will be the second run of the game for the Kings. As the manager does come out to check up on Junis on the mound. 
And that brings up Corey Lee, who hits a pop fly deep to center field. And even Jesus Aguilar should make this one. This is a deep fly ball. We will send the runner from third. And look at this. It is a laser of a throw in. Jesus Aguilar is gunned out at the plate. That throw couldn't have been more perfect. And that brings up Scooter Jeanette here with two outs in the inning. And he does just hit a ground ball. So out of all that, we only get one run in that inning. So now let's check up on Alex Wood on the mound, and he is pitching pretty good through three. Here is a chopper to third base and a slow roller, and Bodie, the throw is offline, and they're going to call that one an error. I'm not sure if that was really an error. That should have been called a hit. And then Whit Merrifield comes to the plate, but then we fall asleep at the wheel, and they get a stolen bag that time as the at-bat does continue. Merrifield watches one on the outside part of the plate as Alex Wood has his third strikeout of the game as that brings up Jorge Soler in the next spot, and he will just jack that one deep over the left field wall. That one went 458 feet. That was a bomb as now they tie this game up at two apiece, and that brings up Hunter Dozier, who's going to hit a pretty deep fly ball to center field, but it is going to be caught by Randy Arozarena. And that one will bring him up at the plate to start out the fourth inning with one out. He hits a chopper too short. And that's going to be Mondesi who can't feel that one cleanly. It's going to be another error. One by Whit Merrifield and one by Mondesi early on in this game. So that brings up Billy Hamilton who is one for one or two for two in this game. And he hits one to the right side. And look at Arozarena. He's going to round second and head to third in a perfect throw. Could have got him, but Solaire cannot get the out at third. And now runners on the corners. And you know I'm going to steal that bag with Billy Hamilton. Hit and run. And he does get a hit to the right side. That's Marcus Simeon at the plate. And he does advance Billy Hamilton to third. And we do take the lead off of that hit. And now that brings up Yasiel Puig, who is one for one in this game with that double to the gap. And he hits one to the other gap. And that one will score one. Let's see if it will score two. Marcus Simeon, he's got decent speed. We're going to send him home. 64. Let's see if he gets in. And the throw is on the money. But Simeon's in under the tag. 5-2. to two. Yasiel Puig is just hot here to start this season. And they do leave Junis in the game as that brings up Jesus Aguilar, who is 0-for-1. But he hits one hard down the right field line. And that one will score Puig. And Jesus Aguilar should be into second with the stand-up double. And he is down on that one. He does have zero speed, but another run in this inning. Four runs. We are hitting the ball extremely well. As look at this. They do decide to keep Junis in the game as that brings up David Bodie. And he will swing at one out of the zone, but does get enough wood on it. And it will drop. And take a look. We are going to send Jesus Aguilar home. And that one will be another run, 7-2 to two here in the fourth inning. 84 pitches that time for the pitcher on the mound for the Royals. And there, this brings up Jake Kalish onto the mound. And now Corey Lee up at the plate. He's hitting around 280 to start this campaign, and he hits a hard one to third, and that one is going to be snagged. And it brings up two outs in the inning. Scooter Jeanette at the plate, the lefty, to face the lefty on the mound. And with a 3-2 count, he will just hit a fly ball deep to center field, actually. And that one will be the third out. But we do have a big inning that time. And now we move on to the sixth inning now. Jesus Aguilar back at the plate. And with a 1-1 count. One out, he gets a hanger over the middle, and he drives it deep to left field, and that one will be out of here in a hurry. His eighth home run of the year. He leads our team in homers, and it does extend this lead eight to three now, as that brings up David Bodie, who is also, he also has a multi-hit game in this one, two for three, and he's hitting above 300 as well, and he gets another pitch right down the middle, back, Two back. Man, I got to admit, our three, four, and five hitters, that's Puig, Bodie, and Aguilar all hitting over 300 to start this season. And that one will extend this lead and eventually give us the win in this one. And Alex Wood gets another win. And there we go. We start out this month hot with our bats and a nice hit game, nice 15 hit game in that one. 
and Kansas City didn't stand a chance. And their starting pitcher actually gave up 10 hits on the mound. What a big game from our three, four, and five. I can't say it enough. And then I got to admit, you know, Billy Hamilton at the leadoff spot did pretty well. So now we move on and we find out Hoy Young Park, who is one of our best young middle infield prospects in our organization. He actually is going to be sidelined with an injury for about a couple months. And then Yasmani Grindal gets traded to the Reds. And it looks like, you know, they do send uh, Nicholas Castellanos on his way as well. So now we move on to the middle parts of May, moving at least towards the middle parts as we face the Baltimore Orioles, kind of a team that is kind of on the low end of the totem pole, pretty much probably one of the five worst teams in, M in the MLB right now. And look at this, Pablo Lopez was had a 10-run cushion and with a chance at a shutout, and he does get the win as that is an encouraging sign for our starting rotation. Our one and two guys are really tearing it up in this rotation. So now we move into the next series. This is going to be the Toronto Blue Jays as we are on the road in this one playing a little bit of AL East baseball. And now here is Nate Jones in for the save, but that time that was a hot fastball up and in, and that one will graze the batters. That brings up Bo Bichette here with one out, and we will get the fly ball to Puig. So one win away from a seven-game win streak to start out the month of May. And that will bring up Uriel Jr. who hits a fly ball. And Randy Arrazarena, that's a can of corn. And there we go, another victory here to start the month of May. And I love what I'm seeing from our offense. And look at this start. We start out 7-0 here on a seven-game win streak. 6-0 in the month of May. And here we go. Let's just dominate here in the month of May. Look at this schedule. We play Miami, the Angels, Detroit, the Angels again. I mean, these aren't the top of top teams in the MLB, even in the AL. So now we take on the Miami Marlins who are in the NL East, and they are kind of a pretty good team right now, to be honest. Remember last year, they actually beat us down pretty well, pretty good. But here we are in a situation in the bottom of the ninth inning. There is Luke Crampton, who does get a bunt single with the man on second base. We just wanted to move him over. And that brings up Yasio Puig, who is the hottest hitter in baseball. He knew he wanted that pitch back. And that will bring up Randy Arrazarena. One for four. He goes the opposite field, and that one does give us another win. And Corey Lee crosses the plate. And there we go. Our Kings are doing great here in the month of May. Corey Lee goes one for three. And here he is back at the plate with a chance at an 11 game hit streak. And just looking at the numbers here, you can see we are doing really, really well on offense. Maybe our pitching isn't the greatest right now, but our offense is doing pretty good. So here is Corey Lee with the one two count facing the Detroit Tigers in the top of the ninth. And he gets thrown out at first, and that one will effectively end his hit streak. But still, 10 games, that's really good for a rookie. And we do get the win, and look who gets the win once again. It's Alex Wood, and he has started out this season pretty hot. So now we are 30-19. and 19. What a month of May it's been. And now we are 11 games over 500. And now Yasiel Puig. The hottest hitter in baseball is on a streak facing the Los Angeles Angels. And let's see if he can extend this hit streak to 11. He beats that one out. And there is a single for him. And now he is on an 11 game hit streak as we are up five to three in this game. And we end up winning this one nine to four off of 14 hits. The wins just keep piling in as Corey Lee went three for five in that game. So why not keep it going? Let's see if he can go to 12 game hit streak here as here he is 0 for 2 in the seventh inning. He gets a pitch to hit and he goes to opposite field and that one will make it 12 straight games with the hit for Puig and he is a hot commodity for us. He is 30 years old. He is in a contract year as well. He's making about 4 million. He's definitely going to be looking to double that come next season. And now let's see. If he can go to 13 hits, 13 games with the hits, 
And facing Justin Anderson in the third game of this four-game series, he hits one to the left side, knocked down by the third baseman, and he beats it out. Another game with the hit for Puig. Nobody can get him out at this point. 13 games in a row, he has reached base successfully with the hit. And look at Corey Lee, another good game from him, one for three, two RBIs. And coming out of that game, the Indians have seen enough from our offense. They want a piece. And look who they want. They want Jesus Aguilar. Aguilar is hitting really good. But let's just see who they're offering. Joe Hudson. I mean, we already have a young catcher in Corey Lee. We definitely don't need another one. And he's not even that young, to be honest. Hudson is kind of on the other side of his 20s. Corey Lee can play five positions. I don't know if we'll find another catcher better than him. I love him at catcher, though. As now we advance to the month of June. And look at how we just tore up the last two weeks going 10 and 1 in the last 11 games that is just amazing finishing 20 and 5 in the month of may this is just crazy to see this turnaround from year one to year two and that will put us on top of the al west at 37 and 20 and you can just see our bats are coming alive Billy Hamilton, you know, we did platoon him this year, and that has really done wonders for him. He is hitting over 300 in that platoon role. Corey Lee is hitting well, but you know, some guys that I just wish would hit just a little bit better. Clint Frazier, Randy Arozarena, those guys are really struggling so far, especially Arozarena. I traded for him in the offseason, hoping that he could be that leadoff guy. I just don't see it now. And I'm actually thinking about moving him down and seeing if maybe our young prospects, one of them can move up and maybe take some uh, at-bats away from him because I need a leadoff hitter who's going to be consistent. Like I said, Billy Hamilton can't be the full-time guy. I could give him the opportunity if he continues to do well, but I guess we'll have to see. And on the mound, Alex Wood and Pablo Lopez, one loss between the two. They are 12-1 and one combined. And our bullpen is doing pretty good. We're not doing amazing, but we're doing pretty good. Good enough to win games. So just looking at all the other guys that are hurt in our organization, Hoyon Park, Tapia, and then Tommy Knight, who is a power hitting first baseman. He is hurt as well. Tapia would be the guy that I would possibly move up in the place of a Rosarena. He's doing pretty well, but he is hurt at the moment. So that is going to do it here for this episode heading into the month of June. Actually, another favorable part of our schedule, Seattle, Atlanta, Oakland, the Angels and Seattle again, and then Baltimore. That is not a hard schedule at all. So the winning could continue in the month of June. So that's going to do it here in this episode. I decided not to make that Puig trade because Puig is just tearing the cover off the ball. No reason to get rid of him. And if he does keep doing well, he could be on his way to a new contract with us. So hit subscribe, hit that like button, stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute. The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it. The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition. But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention. It don't matter though. Yeah. And it don't even matter though. Nope. Hey, it don't even matter.